Well, hello there. Everybody, welcome to some more Diablo 2. No, I'm not going to be doing a new character in Act 1. That is ridiculous. I was just standing here because it's the best place to be. And it's just where my run ended. So, uh, yeah, we got that Sivirbs cudgel. I really haven't got anything better than that. I think I swapped out my amulets and uh, this bad boy here. This... We finally got some magic find. It's a very small amount, but it's something. I don't think... I got a new belt as well. The rune strap. Oh, baby. I've used one of those before. Um, no new booties, which is kind of sad because I really, really want some new boots. And I've swapped up our charms a tiny bit here. Nothing in the stash right now. I don't think our main man has got anything really important. I haven't mentioned this yet. If you give an... Uh, a minion, a ethereal item, they actually don't degrade on them, which is very nice. Um, so you can use those for your, uh, you know, giving your minion something that'll never break is pretty handy. I think I gave this guy a new one. I can't remember. Doesn't really matter. Um, show you guys what I found off camera. Just kind of some more chips. Um, not very many, honestly. I don't think there's enough. <laughs> And a handful of jewels. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those yet. Um, it's just some more runes. They're not really ordered yet. I really haven't gotten any uh, crazy rune words planned out just yet. And uh, there's a new um, amulet I got later on for some magic find if I ever make a sorceress. I might sell this, but I think uh, 11 or 12 is an okay level to start doing stuff at. But there's this guy right here. It's a pretty cool... Uh, Sorceress one. It's a cold skill one. Pretty cool. And I think, yeah, just this magic find ring. Nothing really too crazy. I just replaced this with, um, for the minion. And I did actually find this shortly after, I think, I started doing another, uh, run of, like, I can't remember where I got this. I think it was in Act 2. So pretty cool. I actually could have gotten this. I can't remember. I think the uh, set bonus is just increased. Oh, let's take a look. Why don't we? Just the the first set is fire res, so it's not really that good. But I, I actually did find that. That's pretty cool. And I did find this Arctic Binding. <clears throat> I actually had this set a long time ago on a... I think it was a Necro I had found it on. I didn't use it, but you know what I mean. I just put my flods in this uh, page for now. So that's pretty much all that's really changed um, in terms of gear and everything. Uh, stats were at level 23. Butterfinger is getting pretty, pretty good. Um, <laughs> not gonna lie. And then just putting my stats into zeal until probably 20. I might switch it up and put it into sacrifice maybe later on, but I don't know. We're gonna stick to zeal first. That's our main skill we're using. I could probably start pumping towards, um, you know, not conversion. That's not what I want. Fanaticism um, at level 18. I probably could have done that already, but, you know, things are things. So, just going to roll with it for now. We're going to start Act 3. So, boy oh boy. <sighs> I know some people don't like Act 3. I really enjoy it because, dude, it's the Dark Wanderer. He's, he's so cool. Watch what he does. He's just kind of here. <laughs> I'll never understand why this happens. It just does. And he always spawns, I believe, these flesh beasts. Sometimes you can get a quest off of your first unique monster pack you find. So the whole point of Act 3 is we're trying to get to Mephisto. This is a pretty pretty easy act, in my opinion. It's, it's just pretty much gravy from here. And we get introduced to Fetishes, Thorned Hulks. These guys are pretty easy. Um, they do have a, I think, knockback? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they have a knockback uh, proc. And it looks like we're doing pretty well so far in terms of HP and everything, because I was kind of worried. I still haven't died, actually, now that I say that, but yeah, I still haven't died yet. Um, I just did like six runs of Act 2, or, or as much as I could tolerate of Act 2 to do. And um, just did like six Countess runs, six Andariel runs. I'm gonna put my feet up, I feel much more comfortable. It's, like, weird outside, man. It's gross. I, like, woke up this morning, and it was, I think, 84 degrees at, like, 7.30 in the fucking morning, and then it was, like, just gross humid. Because I look out the window, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's that's cool. 
you know, it's it's pretty outside. It's finally rained because we've been having a lot of, you know, speaking of fire, <laughs> um, you know, lots of fire around the area, lots of just gross hot weather. And then I'm like, oh, cool, it finally rained. And then I wake up and I just open the door and it's just like fucking Florida just floods into my lungs. So I was like, ah, we're really, really helping here, aren't we? So, <laughs> yeah, that was a, an interesting time. But uh, I actually really, really like Act 3. I, I know some people are pretty sniffy about it. Um, and if you can't tell, that lightning proc is from my belt I got off camera as well. The reason I'm not going to show that is because it's very boring. Um, I usually just put on a podcast and uh, zone out while I do it. Usually, I think, altogether, it only takes about an hour. Um, and trust me, it's really hard not to keep playing because I'm like... No, we gotta show all the things for the first run, because it's, it's... You know, that's, a, that's what I kind of wanted to make a Diablo series a long time ago, too, is because I always see people that are like, Oh, look at my max gear, and, you know... I don't think that's bad, but the average player does not start like that ever. Um, that is just unfathomable. Oh, you know, it's just, it's Enigma. You know, you, you just have it. I, I don't think I'm targeting anybody in particular, though. <laughs> but... I don't think anybody personally says that, but you know what I mean? Like, it's always, like, people using, uh... Actually, a lot of Diablo 2 videos I've seen in general in my years are actually not by the main guys you're probably thinking, I'm assuming. I'm just talking, like, random Diablo videos. Everyone's got, like, you know, Geed's fucking amulet. They've all got, like, the Uber Quest done somehow. I'm like, uh, yeah. I... I don't think so, fam. <clears throat> Those of you who don't know Uber Quest without Pluggy, and this was like before Pluggy was a thing, so I'm like, yeah, you did not get like your Aeneid's thing or whatever it's called. It's like one of the plus skill, oh, your perfect fucking like, yeah, I, I can't stand shit like that. I'm like, you probably just used a hex editor and edited it in, and you're like, oh, look at me, I'm so good. But yeah, that's why I wanted to do a series like this, because I'm like, dude, it's like the entire experience and how... You watch how a character develops in Diablo 2, and you got to remember that the character just doesn't start out like at 120 miles an hour, and all those like crazy like perfect amulets and like fucking perfect exact uniques to exactly what the class they're playing is. Yeah, that rarely happens. It takes years to get really good in Diablo 2. Well, not for a character, but just in time of actual experience playing the game. I still don't even consider myself that good. You might be like, oh wow, you're kicking ass, you haven't died, that's pretty cool. But I'm just like, yeah, sure, I guess. I mean, I still make dumb mistakes from time to time. I mean, I actually almost died um, doing something in Act 2. It was a bunch of um, gore bellies, those big nasty obor guys. They're also called obors is why. Um, I only know what they're called from, like, Hell Difficulty, I think. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they... They slam me into a corner, and I had, like, vampires spawn, and they fucking lit me on fire, and then there's the beetles just creeping in, and I was getting fucking really nervous. I actually paused, because I was like, oh, I'm not gonna die, please. And I was tempted to save and quit, but then I'm like, oh, wait, I've got a fucking rejuvenation potion right here. And that's why I don't include all that, because it's really boring. I mean, I don't think it's bad to get killed in Diablo, but it's like, I, I prefer not to. And if I do die, it's pretty spectacular usually. At least in normal difficulty, it's pretty hard to do. I mean, it may look like it, but look at my resistances right now. Poison res is really not that important. Um, like, ever, I hate to say. Uh, the most important resistances, in my opinion, are probably fire and cold. Lightning is pretty... I mean, it's very important, but there's not very many monsters that have lightning procs, by default, I should say. Um, if you get, like, a lightning-enchanted fucking extra fast, like, oh god, it just... It sucks shit. But that's also another reason I hate Diablo 3. You don't have to worry about anything. It's like, oh, look, my character just does more damage. And I'm doing better because I got plus one more damage after another raid. And you do another one, oh, I got another one plus more, one more damage, yay. It's like, you don't really feel like you're escaping anything. Every every character just feels sterile. I don't know. I'm not saying it's terrible, because that's kind of what I'm doing right now, but... It just doesn't... You don't feel that, like, progression of frustration, of, like, shit to worry about. Like, I think the only worrisome... And I, I keep in mind, I played on T6 
for, I mean, when that was actually the highest difficulty, and then they just get, oh, it's on terror, 20 and 30 and 40, and oh, fuck it, we don't know what we're doing. And, like, I was like, okay, cool, I'm tired of this. Um, it's not actually harder, it's just taking longer to do. Um, like, I'm not actually gaining any joy in just getting incrementally one to two more items every single time I do. It doesn't feel hard, is what I'm trying to say. But, like, I played on T6 when T6 was the highest, and if you don't know what I mean, it's Terror 6, I'm pretty sure. Uh, because fuck normal difficulty progression that was established in Diablo 2. I don't think I need to be in here. I, I always screw this up. I do not think I need to be in the spider forest. Or, sorry, in the spider cavern. You know, let's just poke our heads in just in case. This is why I said I'm not a professional. I, I don't remember the dungeons in Act 3 very well. There's actually quite a few, and there's a quest revolving around them later on. But, um, yeah, I, I just, uh, like, in this game, I can tell you exactly what the most terrifying shit to come across is. Immune to fire, immune to cold, you don't have fucking resistances to it, it's got, like, extra strong, extra fast, lightning, it's just, your fucking butthole tenches up as soon as you see it, you go, oh my god, I'm going to die. That is... That is what I love about Diablo 2. And you have to think about it, and you're playing as cold so cold fire source, you just go, holy shit, what do I do? And you panic, and then you freak out, and then you just run away from it, and you try not to get killed. In Diablo 3, it's like, oh no, it's arcane, and then like, it just does a laser beam attack, and it hits you, and you go, ow, that really hurt. And it doesn't really feel dangerous, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because you had like, every character had like a dodge skill, I mean, most characters in Diablo 2 actually do have a form of a dodge. Actually, Paladin does have one, too. Um, Barbarian has one with Leap. I think Assassin has one. I think Javel... No. It might be in Bow or something. I know that Javelin... Damn, I keep calling it Javelin. Fucking Amazon. I'm pretty sure Amazon also has one. She has a... I know she has a passive dodge chance. Ugh. I just ate dinner and I did a bunch of dishes and shit, so I'm tired still, but... Yes, I'm pretty sure she has a passive dodge skill. I'm very certain. I don't know what it's called off the top of my head, but I do know she has one. Like, right here, it's like, curse, holy shit. Okay, we got the jade figure. Dope. That's a very, very easy quest, so... Um, you get the jade figure off your very first, um... Oh, look, it is! I had to go in here. I got Kalim's eye. Cool, that's... That's fantastic. Um, so that wasn't a total waste of time. Cool. Let's uh, get the fuck out of here then. And show it to Deckard Kane. Loot Golane, ha! Ah, show it to the dude. <laughs> yes, his name is just the dude. He's, he's uh, what's his name from fucking the Big Lebowski. Uh, big, big fat guy. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. John Goodman, there we go. I'm like, I know his name. Anyways, yeah, we gotta find three parts of a dude. Oh, my desktop. Oh, no. Um, and it's, it's like, cool, we're gonna break a wall. It's basically Act 2's story. But yeah, it's like, I, I know exactly what, um, give him the golden bird, all right. Um, it's like, I know exactly what's da dangerous in this game. And in Diablo 3, it's like, oh, here's a dungeon full of skeletons and zombies, and you plow through them and they die, and you go, ah. Oh, my favorite character. Damn it. I wish you people would just leave me alone. <sighs> yes, he's my favorite character in the entire game. Damn it. I just love when he says, damn it. So you take that to him, and he gives you 20 HP. Very, very, very easy quest. It takes like two seconds. And you get that off of your very first uh, unique or champion kill in the entire uh, act. Never. Never! Yeah, exactly what Deckard Cain said. Never! I'm just angry and old. I don't know, that's... Like, I can tell you exactly what's really shitty in this act. Um, when you start getting fucking piled on by zealots, no, not like me. But um, you start getting piled on by zealots and you just start getting fucking backed into a corner by, like, obors, and you fucking... Oh, Jesus. And then, like, the vampire lords cheese away your health when you don't have good fire resistance. Like, characters with low fire res really struggle in Act 3, because fire res is very important in Act 3 and 4. Because, hell, I bet you anything, in, this, in the game based on demons and killing hellish creatures, hell might have a thing to do with fire, so it kind of comes into a play. 
Actually, Mephisto is a very dangerous boss for cold as well, because he has a very nasty cold proc as well. Um, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I can tell you exactly what's dangerous in Act 2, Act 3, Act 4, 5, uh, fucking whatever, I don't know. Fucking Act 5 is just... If I remember correctly, once you start in Nightmare Mode, Act 5 has completely random enemies every time you play it. But, like, in Diablo 3, it's like, oh, cool, let's do a Rift. Oh, I actually... Fucking hell, I remember when Rifts were, like... Do you remember the t Trial of Error, or whatever the hell it was called? Or Trial of Tears? And fucking... Oh, wait, that's Trail of Tears, and that's sad. But I, I can't remember what it was called. They were, like, the Trial runestones. You had to go in and fucking hit things for two minutes. I remember it was two minutes. And it would be like, okay, you did the thing for two minutes, and you can get a shitty Tier 23. And then you do tier 23. Oh, here, do 24, 25, 26. And then it was just fucking... Uh, it was so stupid. Like, rifts were so dumb. And then they took that out. They're just like, oh, fuck it. They're just gonna be statically leveled to you as a character. Why did they just do that in the first place? Or, better yet, why even bother with the rifts and just make it so monsters have unique drop tables? Fuck, that's not hard. Or just add more content over time, like new areas and new quests. Hey, should we probably put more stuff in the game? No, just keep adding Radiant Daily quests. That'll be fun. I know they're not dailies, but they're structured like dailies, I should say. I don't mind dailies because I... I don't actually think dailies are wrong. But in a game like Diablo 2, where a daily is just basically run an entire area, I guess. But it just doesn't... It doesn't feel rewarding. Like, I feel rewarded because I know what areas contain what and what to look out for for each character class. I guess there is sort of that in Diablo 3, but it's just not very fleshed out. And before you go, oh, but they patched it, dude. My days of playing Diablo 3 are gone. They are so gone, they are not coming back. And it makes me angry because I love Diablo 1. I love Diablo 2 a lot as I'm playing it right now, as you can clearly see. I have the Diablo 2 battle chest, which even has like the... Uh, the old, like, Prima Games strategy guide with all the fucking outdated information and, like, tips and all the acts and shit and concept art. I would actually, I was tempted to buy this once. It was a, I don't know if I can still find it, but there was, like, a Diablo-themed, um, D&D campaign. I don't play D&D, because why not just play video games? So, that's my philosophy. But, um, yeah, like, there was a, like, a Diablo-themed D&D campaign with, like, stats and shit, because Diablo is based on D&D. Like, that's so fucking cool! I actually wanted to get that and play it, because it would be fun! And I've even got Diablo RL, which is really cool. I actually might play through that someday. And since I do technically own the actual soundtrack, I can play it with the soundtrack on as well. Which is just kind of cute. Even though I, I don't really care about, you know, like, the entire soundtrack. I believe this guy's always here. I'm like, fairly damn confident. Ooh, a big fucking heavy sword. Well, I... Wait, is that two-handed or one-handed? Nah, it's two-handed. Nah, eh, never mind. I don't care. I love Zweihanders and stuff in, um... Like, Dark Souls and everything, but not in this. They are my favorite kind of weapons. Actually, my favorite medieval weapon is actually the German Kriegsmesser, which is a... That was really terrible. Fucking hell, I can speak German for the most part. That's a really... Kriegsmesser is one of my... Oh, Jesus, you can see... I was talking about this. That fucking flame attack. And since I'm a zealot, I have to stand still when I hit. So that's really scary. But they were... If you look it up, it's like a big fucking... It just literally means battle knife. It's just this gigantic... Um, fucking... Oh, it's so cool. I love how it looks like it just took a giant kitchen knife and just put a fucking... Like, Photoshop enlarge thing on it. It's really funny. Um, but yeah, that's my favorite weapon of all time. Um, and I also have a replica Claymore in my closet, too. And I actually know a handful of Hema, so... I feel pretty safe to say I love we medieval weaponry. But, um... Anyways, yeah, like, Diablo 3... Just... It fucking hurts, man. It, it absolutely... This is how I know it feels. Like, this is how it feels when your franchise gets fucked, okay? It's like the Doom movie for Doom fans, okay? It's like that. That That is a ass-cheek, grating, abysmal shit show of a film. And people are like, oh, I liked it. 
Well, yeah, that's great if you liked it, but it's a shitty, terrible movie, and it's really unfaithful to the source material, dude. It's really bad. Oh, The Rock's in it. Yeah, well, The Rock's in fucking everything, and I wish they'd stop putting him in every goddamn movie ever made. It drives me so... I was on YouTube the other day, and I was just making dinner, and I just see this ad for some Disney movie where he's like a train conductor, and I'm like, why is he in every single thing ever? I don't have anything against him as a person. It's not like, oh, fucking The Rock, fucking... Ugh. No, it's just, I don't understand why every... I guess it's because he's cheap, I'm guessing, because he's probably got the greatest, like... I don't know, props to him, he's a good actor, I just think it's... And he's not even a half-bad singer. I, I hate, like, children's shows and stuff, because I'm an adult, I guess, but... His singing in Moana wasn't terrible, like... I mean, he's he's... He's a fantastic entertainer, clearly, because he was, you know, in WWE for, like, 800 fucking years, and he's always been relevant there. So it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't have anything against The Rock, it's just... Damn it, put somebody else in. I get so tired of seeing it. It's like when everyone's like, oh, fucking gonna get uh, Ashley Birch and fucking whatever her name is. It's like, why don't you just give somebody a new chance? Just stop fucking having everyone be the same. It just drives me insane. But then again, I also don't give a shit about, like, who voices what. But damn it, man, when you fuck with Diablo, you fucking break my little tiny heart, okay? It's just not okay. Um, I just don't get it, like, how they fucked Diablo 3 up so bad is beyond me. And everyone's like, oh, you're, like, everyone in, like, my personal, you know, life of living that I do that knows I love Diablo, they're like, oh, are you excited for Diablo 4? And I'm like, uh, not really. Um, my hope in the series kind of died after Diablo 3. And that's not to say I'm gonna say that Diablo 4 is gonna be bad. I mean... Truth be told, I used to hate Dark Souls. I thought, oh, this is fucking overrated garbage. But I I genuinely do not like Diablo 3. It actually soured my... It's like MK11 completely soured my entire perception of the series because of how shithouse it was. I, I swear to God, dude. Like, it's, it's baffling to me. Because Blizzard is actually... Well, they used to be, I guess. They used to actually have a really good track record. And then they just went downhill after Overwatch and shit came out, and then they just said, Oh yeah, that whole, like, Diablo game. Uh, yeah, that's a thing we made, I guess. And then they just didn't know what the fuck to do with it. I don't have a problem with them focusing on things like, uh, WoW, and... Oh my god, this is what's... I've been dreading this shit the entire game, and I was not kidding. Those are so dangerous. Um, and since I'm a zealot, I have to stop and hit them every time I hit them, so I don't get a choice to move yet. Oh, man. But it's like, I don't know how they fucked up so hard. Like, just make Diablo 2. Like, just just do that and tweak it and make it look good in 3D. Just fucking, how hard could that be? I really struggle to think of how difficult that actually is to do. Especially when you have literally one of the most successful companies of all time. Like, with infinite money and infinite staff, how do you fuck a game up so badly? Like, it just blows my mind. I don't even understand how that's physically possible. Uh, call res. Hmm, didn't I have a poison res one in here? I cannot... Yeah, let's just get rid of this one. Let's swap that out. Let's get some coal res for a few minutes. I mean, we're gonna need it for fucking Mephisto, honestly. Um, and I'm scared for that if I'm being totally, totally honest here. Uh, he's kind of a nasty boss. At least early on. Um, but I know people say, oh, well, potential, I actually don't really care if someone says, oh, well, it had potential. It doesn't really mean anything if the ending result is still, it's a piece of shit. That doesn't really make it any better. It just means it could have been better. It's still shit. <laughs> like, I don't think it's, if you like Diablo 3, that's cool. I, I do not care if you like it. You're not going to sway my opinion on it either. Just like you should not take my opinion as the objective only opinion you should ever have on the game. Or anything, for that matter. But, like... Jesus, I just... I don't get it. It genuinely is confusing that they... Okay, so, like, let's take it back a little bit so this makes a little bit more sense as to why I find it so... Oh, damn it, I can't carry anything. Um, it just... Okay, let's, let's put ourselves back in, like, 19 fucking whatever, like... 1923 or whenever Diablo 3 came out, or sorry, Diablo... Or when uh, Warcraft came out, right? So Warcraft was just kind of half-assed. Like, the story was all, like, literally just rushed in and just thrown in there, okay? I don't know if you guys know that or not, but that's true. 
Um, all of Warcraft's story was made up in, like, one afternoon. And then it just got expanded on, and then, like, you know, the community was really loving and cool. And I, I actually do like WoW. It's just not personally my kind of game. And it's really hard to justify, because I, I was tempted because of the uh, the resurgence of old-school WoW, you know, but... I, I, it's hard to do after you played RuneScape for like 15 years, okay? It's really hard to do another MMO, but, you know, here's what pisses me off. It's like, okay, Warcraft was groundbreaking. It was brand new. Well, it wasn't groundbreaking, I guess, but consider the time it came out and like, there was like, what, four, maybe five RTSs. There was Dune, there was Command and Conquer, and I think that might actually be it. And then there was Warcraft, okay? So, I don't care that Warcraft is not an RTS. That is not even the point. So then they come out with StarCraft, right? StarCraft does really well. It's like, oh, cool, we're doing really well. And then Blizzard releases Diablo. Diablo does marginally well, but they also introduce Bnet through Diablo 1, right? So it's like, oh, cool, that's pretty important. And then Diablo 2 comes out. Boom! Big fucking explosion in, like, players, popularity, etc., etc. I even had, like, friends... Um, who had their parents talked about playing this game when it was out, okay? Like, when I was in, like, grade school, okay? Like, it was a big deal. I mean, it didn't require very much to run. You just had to have, like, a Pentium computer and a fucking, like, stick of Band-Aid, like, adhesive, and you got yourself a computer and hoped it worked back then. I, I have built computers from that era. They're fucking terrible. Um, but yeah, I mean, it didn't require much. You could even put in, like, the... That's why I don't run it, because I don't want to run a glide wrapper, because doing that's a pain in the ass. But, you know, it's like, oh, like, cool. And then StarCraft Two comes out. Holy shit. Huge, huge, huge success later on, right? And, I mean, that's obviously technologically. StarCraft Two was like a benchmark game in 2000, what, 10 or 11 when it came out? And then you had, like, Warcraft Three Before that, of course. But Warcraft Three massively does better than the sequel and well warcraft 2 is considered like fucking insanely difficult but you know it, it's it's still very popular it's very good starcraft and them are very popular still and blizzard still has a good track record here and then you know they release wow which is i mean kind of a big deal i mean i'm not a huge fan personally myself but i mean i like it i just i don't know i wouldn't really call myself a wow fan i'm not invested in the community but then you get, like, fucking WoW. It was a huge fucking deal, right? Like, WoW, there was nothing like WoW on the market. There was little MMO games here and there, and, like, Flash games. Like, I've, I've been in those. They're, like, basically just virtual chat rooms with, like, some shitty, like, graphics. Uh, there was so many of those, too, back in the day, because you could just slap it in and go, right? Like, from an internet browser. That's why RuneScape was so damn popular. Um... But, like, then you have, you know, StarCraft II expansions and then WoW expansions. And then it's, for the long time, you know, Diablo II came out with one expansion. It was pretty solid. I mean, Diablo I had one expansion that was released by Sierra. It did really well. Well, I would say really well. I think it did pretty much marginally well. It did as good as you could expect it to do for just a, a game, right? And then, oh, Jesus, I knew this was going to happen. It was like, eh, it's going to be a dead end. But, um, yeah, you get Diablo III. You could not play the game on fucking launch because of the fucking error codes and all the issues with, like, Demon Hunter crashing and respecking your character down to zero. And then you have, like, fucking update after update after update after update that doesn't even... It doesn't even look like the same game anymore. It doesn't even play like the original game anymore. They took out the auction house. Then they, they tried to take out potions. They took out potions. They took out, like... Like, they, like they took out the fucking campaign necessity to keep playing. Like... The amount of shit that Diablo 3 has went through is not even close to, like, game-changing. It's not even groundbreaking. You know what was groundbreaking for? It was fucking player unfriendliness and just aggravation to get playing. It was... It was unbelievable. I had friends that were playing it when it first came out, and they said, this is not good. And they, they felt like that was regret. And, uh, I actually didn't buy Diablo 3 until 2000... Uh, maybe 13. I want to say it was 13 or 14. Either way, you know, Reaper Souls... Yeah, it was... 
it had an expansion because that's just kind of PC gaming in a nutshell, right? This is the age before DLC was popular. You know, you had expansions to the games you liked. And I, I can't think of anybody in this day and age that I know of in person, I should say, because I always level if I can tell a game's popular is if I know people in real life that actually play and enjoy it, usually. But, um, I don't think I've ever met someone that enjoyed Diablo 3. It's such a just travesty, man. I can go on for hours and hours and hours, and then you can't just, like I always said in one of the videos here, I was like, you can't just say, oh, it's bad, and then just not play it. No, I played it, like, three seasons i had to stop on the separate season because i was so bored i was like this is just not fun and i stopped i played the um i think the last diablo 3 update i played was i logged in just going you know what fuck it let's just see if the game's still jerking itself off who knows and it was the 25th anniversary update or whatever that just launched the tristram like daily thing whatever and i was like oh that's gonna be pretty cool I play it, it takes like 10 minutes to clear, it was really ugly looking, it did not look or feel anything like Diablo 1. And this is coming from someone who's played Diablo 1 a lot. And it was... I just said, oh, let me guess. I didn't even have to go online to figure out the cow reward, and I was like, let me guess, you're gonna get like a cow f oh, of course, it's a fucking cow familiar, okay, cool. This is just gonna jerk itself off in nostalgia and stupid shit for hours, isn't it? And it, it just sucked. I was like, this is not content that's worth playing every year. This is not worth doing at all. Like, you could go through the entire game and not do that. It's very unimportant and it doesn't matter. Like, I just felt so pissed off. I was like, why do I even fucking bother? Like, it's so stupid to me that, like... They had all the money, all the fucking time in the world, and they still fucked it up. They still could not even get the basic combat down. They couldn't get, like, class balance down. And yeah, Diablo 2 had its fair share of issues, obviously. Hammered and being the glaring one, in my opinion. But, uh, it's, it's one of those things that I'm like, how do you fuck it up so bad? I can get that, like, you had, like development change it did go through development hell that's true diablo 3 is a lot like duke nukem forever it did go through a very long um and kind of messed up development hell but even then i don't know how you can fuck it up so bad because path of exile was out as well and path of exile is actually pretty good from what i've seen and played i think i played it briefly with a friend or two and i was like yeah that's actually pretty good like how hard is it to make a game that's just like <laughs> You click on enemies, they die, you get items, and it, the game gets harder, and you need to, like, strategically pick up items and do certain things. How do you fuck that up? That's so easy. Like, and the only difference is you'd be working with is a different graphics engine and maybe some slightly different, like, programming? I don't know. It just always strikes me as really concerning as how... I mean, you can argue, well, maybe they had people working on WoW, but WoW is a whole separate entire entity of, like people working in blizzard there's like i i don't know how they fucked it up so bad and i used to actually like just think oh it can't be like wow and then i played it and i was like wow it is exactly like wow <laughs> and i i just sort of like it still boggles my mind like it really really does i i just don't understand how they could make a game not fun it's it's fun in a very like reptilian sense ah my desktop like, it's fun in a reptilian sense. Like, yeah, you kill monsters, they go and they die, and then they drop gold, and then you pick up the gold and you buy items. Or, sorry, you sell items, and then you get better stuff. That's such an easy concept. But they screwed it up so bad. Okay, well, like, the update, Blizz, I actually watched this. This is where I knew that Diablo was starting to fucking train wreck towards a goddamn wall. It was at BlizzCon, like, 2017... It was either 2017 or 2018, where they decided, oh, look at this groundbreak. No, here's what they did. They referred to the the people that were there as my little demon hunters. You guys have done so good killing demons. It's like, do you just treat your fans like they're just children? Oh, they probably are. 
but you know what I mean. It's just the way they were talking to the crowd was just so cringy and shitty. Like, I, I don't think anybody there wanted to be called that, first of all. <laughs> Maybe one guy, less, like, creamed his jeans, I don't know. This wasn't red shirt guy, okay, that is fucking legendary. Um, is this supposed to be like a, an early April Fool's joke? That is the funniest shit that I think you could- What's the matter? You guys all have phones? That is the funniest shit I've ever seen in a PR stunt in my entire life. Because his disappointment is immeasurable, and his day was certainly ruined, okay? That was amazing. <laughs> that is- that is just legendarily funny. Like, his face, and then the way the guy reacts, and the way the crowd reacts, it just shows you. You know, you can piss off dumb PR people, whatever. Uh, that's pretty good if I was playing something else. But, um... You know, you can piss off, like, you know, gaming press, whatever. You can piss off parents, but you know who you're going to piss off the most and you don't want to piss off is your consumer, because that is the person that's going to pay your damn check at the end of the day. And if you piss them off, they're not going to buy or keep using your product. And this is coming from someone who is one of those people. So I think I have a little bit of a say in this. But, oh God, they were so... They were so proud at this, the one I'm talking about, not, not Red Shirt Man, that was incredible, okay, that was fucking legendary. Um, I gotta take a sip of this so I can remember how this actually goes down. Mmm. That's good water. Um, so if I remember correctly, <clears throat> I'm sure, I mean, it's all documented, you can find this. It's, uh, it was the Diablo 3 presentation time. And they they had the the just cringy my little demon hunters you guys killed so many demons because that's totally what Diablo is about no it's about killing monsters and getting loot no one cares about what the demon or whatever is that you kill first of all like this guy probably okay they they first they did that look at our brand new rift dungeon monsters that you're gonna get to fight they're so gross and ugh, metal and then they. They were so like, oh, look how long Deckard Cain has to walk in Tristram. Okay, first of all, what fucking idiot that's playing Diablo 3 is relying solely in Tristram and identifies only in Tristram? Okay, that was my first like, all right, what the fuck is going on here moment. So I'm just like sitting there. I'm watching this in real time, too. I was like, okay, this is really shitty. And he's he's going off about like... Look at the distance! We moved the jeweler to this spot! And I'm just like, okay, that's worth a presentation for? And then he starts talking about, oh, look at how you can move Deckard Kane over to here now so you don't have to click as much. And I'm just like, oh, okay. I, I still don't know where this is going. <laughs> this is just kind of turning into me watching... A uh, digital gray man who dies in act fucking one, so why are you even... Why does it matter where you move him to? He's dead. So, I, I just kept thinking that while I'm watching this. And I'm just like, okay, are they gonna show anything fucking useful? And then, like, they're like, oh, we're gonna lower the fucking grind for Kunai's cube. And I was like... This is worth a presentation and not- this is just patch notes in presentation form that doesn't need a presentation. And so... Oh my god, and then everyone started clapping! So it made me fucking like want to spit up blood was that everyone was clapping that they were like, Oh look at it, Dagger Kane finally made it! It's like... This is not a presentation that is worth watching or something you should present. This is just some guy coming out here and telling you, look what we, we did to the map in very basic and small quality of life ways like that's not worth a PR stunt in my opinion basically and then I think they were hyping up oh look all the new monsters you were gonna add to the game oh they're so fucking cool and guess what they show up in rift dungeons and they die and they they don't do anything to the game they just show up and they get killed so why are you hyping up what is essentially it was like what the tryptophobic rat and like I, like one angel thing like and then here's what pissed me off even more they spent like an hour and a goddamn half focusing on fucking lore i was like this is not gameplay this is just you sat there in front of a computer mashed your hand on it and i don't care if i'm a writer this is fucking horseshit this is not game this is just someone saying 
Uh, the slime prince of fucking the Vlea jungle is imbued into an item now, and then he came to the... I don't care. Show me some gameplay, you fucking idiot. That's what I want to... I want the game that I bought for 80 fucking USD dollars, okay? I want to know what you're going to put into it to make me actually keep playing it. Like, they didn't add anything. And they're like... And now we're just going to have it so we do away with these things. And I'm just like... And then there was that guy that got, like, a stiffy because they they were talking about... Is the Sisters of the Lidless Eye? Are, 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 are they okay? Did they make it? And then the guy, you can tell, has, like, no idea what the fuck he's talking about because he probably never played Diablo 2. And he's just like, um, they did this thing and I'm sure that they're... So sure! And this guy is just, like, staring at him wide-eyed, and I'm just like... Do people play video games to have, like, a video game experience anymore? Or do they just focus on, like, lore and not actually give a shit? It really bums me out about modern games. But, like, I watched that whole presentation and I just... I just fucking zoned out most of it because I'm like, this isn't actually a presentation. This is just patch notes, okay? This is... I get more entertainment from looking at, like... Sims 4 patch notes without, like, context is very fucking funny. Then I did that entire, like, hour and a half presentation that was just a piece of shit. And I just loved... Oh, man. I just loved the red shirt presentation. Because that was the apex of when I think Blizzard realized they fucked up. I, I think... You all have phones is the best I'm not sure what to say response to a question when people are booing me on stage. And I don't think it was that guy in particular's fault. He was probably just told to go out there, say some stuff about things, and they'll cheer, and then you just say, have a good day. I, I get it. Like, he probably had no idea what half the sh He was probably just told to read some of the shit off of, like, a note card before he went out there, and, like... I'm not mad at him. I'm mad at the people behind the idea. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, is when they're like, oh, we're going to create Diablo Immortal. It's a free-to-play, fucking grindy, shitty game, and no one played it. Because, guess what? No one liked anything in the Diablo community anymore because Diablo 3 was a failure. Diablo Immortal was just Blizzard's token admission of saying, I don't know what the fuck to do anymore. And then... They made more Hearthstone cards, and they added more shit to that one game, uh, whatever it's called. Overwatch, there we go. I don't play Overwatch, I've played Overwatch personally, and I didn't like it. I was like, this is like Baby's first Team Fortress 2 with way too much shit in it that doesn't need to be in it. It's like, I just didn't find it fun. I played it for like seven hours, and I was like, this is just shitty. Like, TF2 does this better and is a lot more balanced and a lot more structured. Having ammunition is also a very godsend of a fucking balanced thing. That just shit's so stupid to me. There's a reason ammo exists in an FPS. If your game doesn't have it, it's really fucking unbalanced. But my point is, is I don't know how Diablo 3, in all the time it took to develop, in all the years of updates, in all the fucking... All the Blizzard money, okay? Like, Blizzard money is like its whole different kind of currency, you know? Like, it's just, there's so much of it on the planet that it's unbelievable. And I don't know how they fucked it up. It's just, I can get half-assing a game. I would have rather had a half-assed, just shitty Diablo 2.5. I would be so content with that. You know why? Because at least I know what it is. And yay, we found the Gibbon, or the Gibbon area, cool. Um, but it just, it, it was such a goddamn dysfunctional mess. Like, look at the things that they added, like, to it. Like, difficulties, okay? Why did we ever need that many difficulties? Like, just keep it normal hell. End game, nightmare, mid game, it worked. Why did they have to do, be like, oh, well, if you put it on... I put the whole... The first time I played it, I actually did not know that, like, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to keep cranking the game the more you keep playing it. And I was like, oh, this is not hard at all. And it's not feeling like I'm progressing my character. I just steamroll everything. And I was playing through as a... Um, 
what's it called? A witch doctor. And I was like, this is just not hard. Yes. What do I take this shit to? I forget. Oh, Ormus. Yeah, he needs that, doesn't he? You have done well, noble hero. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, this magic ring does me no good. No good, Shane. I saw you kill. Uh, 3 to 11. I don't think I'm going to really come close to getting rid of that for a while, personally. Um, I saw... Ooh. Ooh, yay. Uh, I, I kind of want to do that, but I... Uh, it's... Nah. This is a tempting one. Uh, but it's not really that good. I might put that in my stash, because it's pretty, pretty interesting. That's not bad at all. Um, but yeah, they had, like, what was it, T... Okay, first of all, I was like, okay, what do you mean the game has, like... And then I look in the difficulty slider, and it's, like, fucking T6 was the highest back then. I'm like, well, what the fuck is the point of even, like, going for, like, anything else then? Like... Just put the game on the hardest difficulty and suffer and get the better XP rate. And then they had like, oh, get more XP gear, and then get more Paragon levels. And I'm like, what's wrong with having a max level? It, it, oh, infinite respects. It'll be cool. You'll never run out of stats. I'm like, why just... why? Just keep it the way it was. It worked. It was fine. We all had a good time. Not every character has to be good in every single thing and get every single thing at a minute's notice. That's so stupid. That's not hard. That's just, you're playing the game on autopilot at that point. I don't understand how anyone finds that fun. It's like in Skyrim how any character can become anything, anytime, anywhere, and have every guild status of every single thing. That is so dumb. And it may sound like needless complaining, but it it's not needless because obviously... I don't have anything good to say about it, and obviously my opinion could influence someone to hate the game, whether they played it or not. It's like, okay, why the hell did they... I mean, Deckard Kane dying, oh, big surprise. He was like 800,000 years old, okay? It's like, okay, he was gonna die eventually. It's his death was just so... It wasn't even rendered in a cutscene. It was rendered in an in-game cutscene by a fucking, like, magic butterfly by, like, a little poof of magic, and then he just died. He was like, ah, uh, 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 the power, uh, and then he dies. It's really anticlimactic, it's really stupid, and then they they just knew they fucked up, I'm pretty sure, and they just had, like, um, Decker Kane, uh, like, talk anyways, like, in the fucking uh, lore descriptions, because they were so... So fucking proud of all those lore descriptions for every single thing in the entire game. The mallet lord has the mallets on his hands and it, this doesn't mean anything to me. This is just an enemy in the game that I hit and it dies. It take It's on screen for like three seconds and then its head explodes and it falls over and it dies. I'm not- I don't have any emotional investment in any of the shit that I'm killing. The goat people, also known as the Khazra, I, I don't care what they're called. They're- they're just a thing that's gonna get mowed down. I don't- I really don't give a shit what their backstory is, dude. It's nice to have that, but, like, I think Doom 4 and Doom 5 did it best. If you want to jam exposition at the player, then let them do it optionally. That is so... Ooh, this could be good. Um, that is the greatest shit you can do. This is- I think this is, like, our second unique. Oh, what the hell could it be? Uh, uh, 36. Oh, shit! Oh, shit. Okay, fuck the cudgel. We're using this. Um, that makes me horny somehow. Wow, that is awesome. Um... Fucking yes. God, yes. Oh, that is... Mmm. Oh, that's that's just good shit. I, I hope that pays off. I really do. That is incredible. You see what I mean? That's the shit that you should feel in Diablo. Right there. This is exactly what I mean. Switching from this to this. Looking at what it can do for your build. And everything in between. That is Diablo right there. This is what Diablo 3 has nothing on. Like, it's just... 
I just like jizzed a little on over a small item. Okay, that's how you know a game is well designed. I can automatically tell this item is going to help me a lot. Like, I can already feel that it is hitting shit harder. I can already feel that my character has higher stats. That is how you do it, okay? Not just fucking throw random rares that just keep plussing up, no. Make the character and the player feel like they're connected. That's how you do immersion. Also, the sound design. I don't actually dislike the sound design of Diablo 3. I think it's fine. I actually generally just thought it was very, like... I'd honestly say it was mediocre, and that doesn't necessarily mean it was bad. It's just it was so average that I really couldn't... I can't hum anything from Diablo 2. Or, sorry, Diablo 3. Except... Da -na 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 -na. But that's the Tristram theme! It's just variations of the Tristram theme over and over and over and over. I'm not saying that's bad. But it just... It didn't have its own identity. It was just aping off of what made Diablo 2 and 3 better. Like, it's the Gibden! Oh, cool, I guess. Uh, sure. Like, you remember the Gibden? It's like, what if you never played it and you're like, oh, the fuck is the Gibden? That... And, like, the fact that every single item had, like, an entire paragraph written for it. And they had, like, a ton of dumb, like, like the Dead Mouse one. I actually have, like, four of those. <laughs> or, like, the Hammer Jammers, okay? It's like, I'm not saying you can't have that, but Diablo has always been a pretty serious game. I'm not saying it's, like, fucking an episode of, like, MASH without the MASH tracks, or, sorry, without the laugh track serious, but... It's pretty close. I mean, Diablo doesn't really take itself very jokingly. And when it does, it's usually pretty dry. Um, it's not the same kind of vein of humor as, like, StarCraft or Warcraft, where it's kind of... Warcraft is very self-aware, which is, I, I think, why it, it's very charming. And then StarCraft has its own blend of, like... StarCraft is campy. Diablo has always had a very serious tone. I don't mean like it's serious, but it's it's mature in the sense that it's like characters don't talk in like leet speak and they fucking quote dumb shit all the time. They, they, they have very grounded in reality like reactions and stuff, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like Marius is a character that would not fit in in Diablo 3. Um, like Marius is serious. Oh, that's a Oh, that's so cool. It's a circlet. That's awesome. But, um, Marius is a character that would not fit in at all in Diablo 3. He's too serious. Like, Tyrael feels out of place in Diablo 3 because he's serious. And the other characters are all snarky and ironic and cultural and ha ha ha. And it's like, he, he feels out of place. Like, because he's too stoic and, and like... I think that's the word I would use to describe most characters in Diablo. They have a certain stoicism to them that makes them feel genuine. Almost like they could come out of a high fantasy or dark fantasy environment. Like, they could be a World of Warcraft NPC maybe, I guess. But, like, they don't take themselves so seriously where it feels hammy. But, I mean, yeah, I guess you could say, like, Diablo and all the primevals. But, like... Their, their personalities are all very distinctive. Like, you could feel that Diablo was young, strong, and imposing. That was, like, how he felt in Diablo 1 and 2. In Diablo 3, he still kind of feels that way, I guess. But then you have characters who are like, Oh, I cast a love spell on the mistress because the lesbians are so cool and edgy and so kinky, lol. And I don't know what the fuck they were trying to do. It was the Enchantress dialogue. It's one of her fucking freebase like, meth quote that she says at some point in the game. She was fawning over me for a fortnight! Ho ho ho! It was so funny! It's like, that doesn't seem in place in a game like Diablo. It would probably be like, I once enchanted a man. I, oh no, I enchanted the sister that night, and it was very hilarious. Like, it would be so serious that it almost comes off as funny. Rather than like, oh, I'm a gambler and I'm the just stereotypical gambler, drunk and angry guy that will get your shit done. Ah, like, he already kind of had that character in Geed, but he was a little bit more reserved. Like Lysander. What makes Lysander a funny character? 
He's fucking, like, old and weird and like, ah, what the hell can I do for you? Like, I like that. Like, he just has this weird sense of personality. Like, everybody seems more believable in Diablo 2 than, and especially in 1. They're very robotic. But, um, everything kind of has its own place, its own personality. When the characters are... I hated how they gave the main characters, like, non-stop dialogue in Diablo 3. That is so grating to me. That's like my... That, to me, is cardinal sin game design. When characters just move and speak the entire time and don't let the player... Kind of like what I'm doing to your ears right now. Um, where they never let the player actually think. Oh, the, like, the character's thinking a certain way. That's what made the characters talking in Diablo 1 and 2 interesting. Was you could glimpse their personality through very small conversational, like, dialects and stuff. Like how the paladin is just kind of stoic and like, yeah... Whereas, like, the Amazon's more like, I am a warrior, and Barbarian's like, I will do this. Or, like, the Necromancer was kind of edgy and, like, untrustworthy sounding. Like, this is death. No, he says too many empty graves. Like, you get the impression that the characters have personality outside of it. But then, like, the characters in Diablo 4 are like, when I was a child, and it's like, I don't fucking care about the palette and I'm playing fucking story. Like, if the paladin in this game had, like, a complicated backstory, I'm like, that that's cool, fam. I don't, I don't care. I I don't connect to him. I, I play through him. How about that? Look at that fucking... Oh, this is getting good. This is why I love getting magic find. It's just... Ooh, we're starting to get into the, the gritty, nitty, yummy titty land that is Diablo 2 loot. Um... But yeah, I don't, I don't care if, like, Razan grew up in a monastery and then the fucking same... I, I don't care about that. I give Razan my garbage gear and he kills shit for me and gives me a buff. I don't need to know his fucking backstory and I don't care about it. And he's just the dude that jabs shit, okay? I don't need to know his entire, like, shoe size and his penis size and his fucking favorite, like sitcom okay it just doesn't matter when people get caught up in shit like that like that's what makes it an important game it's just really it just undermines what i feel like modern gaming is coming down to it's just like oh it's got to have like deep complicated lore and just uh, just let the game be fun let a game be simple let a game organically tell its story that's what makes dark souls such a good series it actually knew what it was doing and it doesn't hammer you over the head every five minutes what makes it a good game? Go figure. <sighs> Let's see, what's this? Uh, angelic Mantle. Um, what's this? Nine enhanced damage. Not bad. That's actually a pretty decent... I might shove that into a like starter gear for like an NPC. Or sorry, new character. Um... I think Rasan. I almost call them Rajan. I'm like, that's a totally different name. Um, I don't know what his stuff's looking like right now. I'm getting kind of nervous. So let's go ahead and do that before. I think his gear is slightly better than this. Oh, no. Hell no. Um, I mean, this has way better... Uh, but it's he has max fire res, so that's not really that important. You see, that's what I mean. Like, I'm actually debating what I want to give my follower because I don't want him to fucking die. That's that's good game design, man. That's how you do it. That is actually a pretty good glaive, if I'm being honest. Like, if I was playing as a Spearazon, which, God, why would you ever? You're a crazy, crazy human being. It's, like, way too slow. I mean, it's doable, but it's just, it's too slow. Uh, let's see. And we gotta go find the... What? What? The spider cave? Oh, hell, that's right. That's the, that's the one that's further up there, isn't it? Or did I already find that and the game's just fucking with me right now? I have the eye and the brain. No, 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 no. It's, there we go, yeah. The game was just fucked up for a second. It was like... Uh, yeah, it's, I was like, no, it's the heart, and you get the flail. I know how this works. I play this game at least 20 plus times the over and over. And I should probably turn this quest in before I forget about it. Now that fewer of the iron yeah, 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 cool. 
I don't really use those, but they are... I don't know, there's people that say they're good. I don't... I don't trust those people, though. They're just probably nuts. I don't know. I'm gonna deposit my stuff and then do another video. So, I'll see you in a moment. Damn it, I screwed it up. Come on, this is yours. <laughs> I love auto chat and stuff.